I don't have my little tripod right now, so um, I'm kind of stacking my camera on top of tissue boxes. But um, anyway, hello, internet, and uh, hopefully you can hear me pretty well. Uh, my voice is pretty quiet, and uh, that's why I'm kind of close to the camera. So um, hopefully you can hear me better than in my other videos. But um. I've had a um, pretty rough past three days. Well, not really bad, but I've had a lot of personal issues going on in my mind. Um, not really anything bad happening in my life. It's just it's all up here. And uh, um, uh, yesterday was. Um, the last show that this band called Jack's Mannequin put on, and, uh, if you know me, you know how much, um, how big, uh, what am I trying to say, how big of a role that Jack's Mannequin has played in my life, and, um, just Andrew McMahon himself, who is the, he's pretty much Jack's Mannequin, or he was. I mean, there's like a band that plays with him and everything, but, uh, he did mostly everything. Uh, and, I don't know, it just really hurt. Not really hurtful. Really depressing and hard for me. Because, uh, if you see me, like, looking over there, it's because I'm looking in the mirror at myself. And I look so much better in a lot than I do in the camera. And it pisses me off. But, um, anyways, uh, Jack's Mannequin, since I was, like, the first time I started listening to them was when I was, uh, like, in seventh grade, in the seventh grade, well, um, that's when I started listening to something corporate, because, uh, I was using Last FM a lot, and, uh, they have radio stations on there that gives you music based on your artist, and if you see Jordan by something corporate, just happened to come up on my radio one day when I was, um, at my best friend's house after school in 7th grade, and then, like, uh, I just played the fuck out of that song, <laughs> and it was so bad for my mom especially, because I know she got tired of it, uh, it wasn't as bad. I started listening to Mindless Self Indulgence and I would like play the same three of their songs like the entire day for a long time. But anyway. Um I started listening to something corporate in seventh grade a little bit, like I don't know why, but I really didn't get into any of their other songs and I guess part of it was because I didn't really torrent music back then or download music. And um after that, uh, I saw Jack's Mannequin in concert, first time with Paramore, um, they opened up for Paramore with some other bands when I was in 8th grade, like, it was right after my 13th birthday, I think, yeah, it was awesome, but, uh, I wasn't, like, like, too into them right now, you know, like, something corporate and everything, but I didn't really know much about them, or Andrew Mann or Jack's Mannequin or anything like that, and, um, then I saw them again at Memphis in May Music Festival, um, the year right after that, which was 2009, and I'll be right back, but I'm it. um, as I was saying, uh, I saw Jack's Mannequin for the second time in 2008, or 9, 2009, that's what it was. At Memphis in May, and I don't even remember what other band I saw that year. I think I was Rise Against. But, uh, yeah. And, I mean, then again, I just, I don't know what. It's hard for me to get into bands, like, if I see them live for the first time. I don't know why. But, yeah, I think I have to hear their studio music just to really fall in love with them. And, <laughs> um, what happened after that? Okay, uh, that was in 2008, and, oh, 2009, why do I keep saying so? It was in 2009. Then later that year, I know I saw it, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> um, 
I don't know, so yeah. Uh, 2009, like, around the summer of the fall. Uh, I don't really know how I went about it, but I started listening to, um, I guess I listened to Everything in Transit, which had been out for quite a while by that point, but that was, um, Jack's Mannequin's first studio album, and, um, I just, Basically, that was it for me, and just, I was going to do it all the time, and, uh, then, you know, I bought their other album, which was The Glass Passenger, and, um, I didn't like that one as much, honestly, it had Swim on it, which is an amazing song, it still is, and it's still very meaningful to me, and, um, just, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I was supposed to be talking about Jack Mannequin and something corporate, <laughs> but um, after that, in I just listened to Jack Mannequin a lot, and I really wanted to see them in concert again. And um, in Ben's Warped Tour 2011, I finally got to, and it was just again, it was you know, face melting. Most people say that about like dubstep, but. Uh, I just kind of skipped a big gap. I, between then, I uh, started listening to something corporate a lot more than I did before. And just like, you know, I really fell in love with their music too, like even more than Jack's Mannequin. And uh, I think it's because I was like, how old was I? Like 14, 15 when I started listening to those bands. And, um, something corporate is more like teenage, relatable kind of music, and Jack Mannequin is like the adult, alternative kind of stuff. But that's both by Andrew McMahon, and they're both absolutely wonderful projects. And, um, yeah. Something corporate is just like the best band ever, in my opinion, or one of the best. It's kind of hard for me to choose one, but if I really had to choose one band, that was just the best ever. It's something quick, okay? But, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah. Fast forward back to 2011, I saw something corporate. I'm trying to see how long I have left on here. Um, I saw something corporate. And, oh, I didn't see them before, but why am I saying? I've never seen something corporate in concert because they broke up a long time before I got into this. And they did a reunion tour, well, like in 2011, 2010. Uh, I think it was 2011. That was 2010. I'm sorry, it was in 2010, but I didn't get to go. But uh, what else? Fast forward back to 2011. Uh, I saw Jack's Mannequin at Warped Tour 2011. It was my first Warped Tour, and it was really hot and really awesome, and I did not get to meet Andrew McMahon that day, because I didn't find their tent soon enough, and like, the signing was like at 12, and I found the tent at like 1.30 or something, it was, made me mad, but then I saw them about, like, less than a month later after that, I saw Jack's Mannequin in Memphis, um, at the New Daisy Theater, and, uh, as soon as we got to the venue, um, I pulled up to park, and I saw Andrew McMahon, like, the back of him running into the tour bus, well, not really, not like he was walking in there, it's not really, like, somebody was chasing him or anything, but, uh, yeah, and I was like, oh my god, there's Andrew, and, uh, like, my heart started racing and everything even though I wasn't even close to him, but, uh, um, yeah, I got out of the car, of course, and my boyfriend was, like, he really wanted me to meet him, I guess, because he knows how much I love him, but I was kind of like, you know, I, I don't want to bother him before the show, maybe we can catch him later, but, uh, he really wanted me to, like, and I really wanted to, but I was just scared of bothering Andrew McMahon, my idol, you know, a hero, and, um, 
uh, so we went up to the tour bus, and, um, he, my boyfriend Ray knocked on the door, and at first, you know, it didn't get an answer, and then the second time he did, Andrew McMahon answered the door, and uh, he was eating triscuits and cheese. Which, I don't know, it doesn't sound creepy though, I remember that, but it shouldn't because it was a really important time in my life. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then he was like, and Jim, and he was like, oh, can you hang on a second? So I was like, yeah. And then he came out, and, you know, my boyfriend, he was like, he really, she really wants to meet you and everything. And uh, I don't even remember what he uh, had said to me. Like, I couldn't even look him in the eyes. Like, sorry. Uh, like, I didn't even cry that much when I met him, but I did a little bit. And, uh, so I was proud of myself for not really crying that much. But it was just one of the best moments of my life. And, you know, I can't really remember a lot of the things I said to him or he said to me, but, you know, I told him that I wrote a school paper about him, and he's like, oh, did you get your grade on it? And I said, yeah, because I did, it was like 96. And, um, uh, I told him that... I'm sorry. Uh, I told him, uh, you know, I know you hear this all the time, but your music has saved my life like a thousand times, and it means a lot to me and everything. And, and he was like, I don't know what he said that, but he was like, well, I'm glad you're still here. And, um, said, uh, like, are you doing better now and everything? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. <sighs> I don't even know if I'll post this now, but I really want to put it on my YouTube. But, anyway, yeah. That was one of the best ones in my life. And, this was really embarrassing. But, yeah, I was really happy that day when that happened, and I was, like, I couldn't believe it happened for a while. And, oh, he told me I was really sweet also. But I think he told, like, everybody, every fan, girl, he, he always told them something like that. Like, I've never heard of a man being mean to any fan before. Um... And then after that, you know, I just got in line for the show, and it was awesome, and, uh, he signed my dollar bill before I got in line for the show and everything, and he took a picture with me, and, uh, this homeless guy was there because it's, it's downtown Memphis, and this homeless guy had come up and, like, asked him to sign his shirt or whatever, which was, you know, uh, and then, the homeless guy was like, give her a hug, and he was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, and he gave me a hug, I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was awful. But, um, yeah, that's my story, um, most of it, and, uh, yeah. I don't really want to mention how, specifically how Chat was mannequin, something corporate, that kind of, how they kind of got me through a lot of rough times in my life. But, yeah. Like, I haven't even been through a lot of things, like, a lot of my friends have. Like, I mean, I don't want to act like everything's happened to me, but just the things that have, have been that have been hard for me, you know, it's just like, Cindy Corporate and Jack Mannequin were there when you got there, you I'm 
sorry for all of you, but you know, that's how it is. <laughs> We're happy dudes. And I also painted a picture of him last year and I and it was pretty bad, so I, I don't think I've really showed it off a lot. But um Anyways, um, the reason I decided to make this video, this is over like 16 minutes, um, the reason I decided to make this video today was because, uh, if you like Jack's Mannequin, you probably already know that they, uh, you know, kind of ended. I mean, um, Andrew McMahon and the rest of them aren't gonna stop making music, but they're not gonna make any more music as Jack's Mannequin, and it's probably going to be a little bit different than what it is before. And, uh, yeah, that happened recently. They, they kind of broke up. And, uh, yesterday was, like, the last show they performed as Jack's Mannequin. It was yesterday and the day before. And, you know, like, as you're involved in the Andrew McMahon community, you probably saw his, uh, little live tweeting he did with all the songs like he would um tweet about them before they were gonna play them <laughs> excuse me and um yeah this is the most i've ever talked in a video ever but um yeah and he was like live vlogging and i was like listening to Jack's Mannequin songs and all night and like crying my eyes out mostly and you know just it's a big deal for me okay just um you know just you know um yeah like uh I'm stupid <laughs> um like recently Fall Out Boys on you know, a hiatus or whatever, and then Jack's Mannequin and all of this, and then Andrew broke up also, and those are like three of the major bands that have been a part of my life since I was really young, especially Fall Out Boy, and uh, well, I mean, like, they weren't the biggest impact on me, but uh, I started listening to Fall Out Boy when I was like 10 or 11, and I'm 17, so, um, not talking about Fall Out Boy today, but, you know, Jack's Mannequin ending has been a big thing for me, I guess. It feels like I've lost a friend, honestly, but we always have J Jack's Andrew McMahon new music to look forward to, and I'm happy for him because he wants to, you know, move forward from Jack's Mannequin because... Um, a lot of that music was from part of his life when he had leukemia and stuff. I mean, if you like Jack's Mannequin, you probably know a lot of this already, but if you don't, you can go watch the Dear Jack documentary. I definitely recommend it. It's awesome. I'm sad. And I gotta change my Um, but yeah. It's just, like, the end of an era for me, and... That's why I made this video to tell all you people who don't care about my Jack's Mannequin story. I guess. <laughs> yeah. And I also wanted to show this off. It's, um, I just bought it. Uh, under a Changing of Times final special edition. Only 700 made. And, uh, you know, like I said, they're breaking up, and I've seen that band three times. I saw Jack's Mannequin, like, four times, but <laughs> it just, it absolutely has broken my heart, too, because <sighs> they've been such a big part of my life as well. Not as much as something corporate and Jack's Mannequin, I think. But, yeah, just some fancy. And I, I'm glad I spent money on it, like... I normally wouldn't buy a vinyl record because I don't have a record player. 
but uh, uh, I just had to give them this time. Yes, and I'm very happy to have this. I'm very thankful for Andreas as well as Andrew Mann and all his bands. And I don't know if there's anything else to say. Thanks for sitting through this book wrap. Probably have to edit out a lot of parts, but, um, yeah, thank you. Um, feel free to talk to me about Andrew McMahon. I get really excited when I meet people that like him. <laughs> so, bye!